Welcome to the exercise science playlist. This is how your body breaks down and burns up fat. Understand the process to therefore implement a plan to be successful towards your fat loss goal. But you are ultimately going to trust the process through a plan of training and nutrition involving consistency, patience, and increasing challenge. And of course, for fat loss, a caloric deficit is key, which you can make up through that training and nutrition. And so before we continue, I am making my own graphics for this video. They're not biologically textbook accurate graphics that I'm producing. They're intended only to help you to understand and visualize the concepts clearly. Icannotdraw.com has been established for a while. Please focus on the information, not my doodles. Videos like this are purely intended to help people develop their knowledge and help people to be successful in their fitness journeys. I'm not selling you any fat loss diet plan or anything based off this video, it's purely meant for informational purposes. And so in our body, we have stored fat known as triacylglyceride, also known as triglyceride, whatever floats your boat. That is how my omelets generally turn out looking. And so the first stage of the fat loss process is called lipolysis. This is where the triglyceride is broken down into more usable energy sources. And so if we look at the triglyceride molecule, it contains a glycerol backbone bound to fatty acids. And this stage of lipolysis breaks this down where it separates the glycerol backbone from the fatty acids. Basically, it's got no backbone, weak. It is now these fatty acids that are used up for energy now that they're free from their shackles. There is a jab of the hut joke in there somewhere about chains and shackles and fatty acids and all that. I couldn't quite work it. And so if we think about it very basically, we demand energy production from our bodies when we're exercising, whatever your exercise may be. And when we're using stored fat as a contributor to this energy production, it is those fatty acids that are the usable form for that energy production. And so how does it do this? Well, it cleaves the bonds between the glycerol and the fatty acids through an enzyme called lipase. And this process is called hydrolysis, which sounds like a character from the X-Men, but I digress. Made simple, lipase will break down this molecule, leaving us with the glycerol and fatty acids. And so step one finished, the stored body fat is broken down into more usable forms. Step two, the transport of these fatty acids through the bloodstream to the target cell to be used up for energy. Step two is basically an uber for the fatty acids, done. And so when the fatty acids are drawn into the bloodstream, there is a protein called serum albumin. That's easy for me to say, take 1000, nailed it, which transports those fatty acids through the bloodstream to the target cell. So essentially you can think of serum albumin as the Uber driver, bit of a weird name, but he does the job. And this part of the fat loss process is known as the mobilization of the fatty acids, the moving of the fatty acids to where they'll be torched. Okay, done, simple, step three. And so this last stage, if you like, is known as beta oxidation. You most likely have heard of the oxidation of fatty acids or fat or the burning up of fat. And this is really that part of the process. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. And so this is where the fatty acids are converted to usable energy, ATP, the body's energy currency. But not so fast, there are obstacles to overcome. And so when the fatty acids enter the target cell and more specifically the cytoplasm of the cell, and my biology teacher when I was a child used to explain the cytoplasm cytoplasm as a jelly-like substance. He also used to show us boxes of dead bees in class, so there's that. Anyway, we need to move those fatty acids from the cytoplasm to the mitochondria of the cell because it's in the mitochondria where they're burnt up for energy. The mitochondrial matrix. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. And this involves the citric acid cycle, but to my point, in order to transport those fatty acids from the cytoplasm to the mitochondria, we need the help of something called carnitine. And instantly your supplement radar will be going crazy because you'll seen so many carnitine supplements for fat loss. And this is where something that would seem to make sense doesn't actually apply when we think about supplementation. Sometimes taking more of a substance, supplementing on top of what you already have, is not evidence-based to give any further benefit. And carnitine is one of those such substances. Supplementing with carnitine supplements is is not evidence-based for helping with fat loss. It really is a case where what you would think would make sense does not happen in practical application. And so the carnitine helps to transport those fatty acids from the cytoplasm to the mitochondria and through certain processes, it's burnt up as energy. And so that's essentially made very simple the fat loss process in your body, the three stages, the lipolysis, the breaking down of the fat, the mobilization, the transporting of the fatty acids, and then beta oxidation, which is 
the burning up of the fatty acids for fuel. Okay, got that sorted. At this point, as always, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch my last video, for taking the time to watch this video. Thank you so much for the support. The support has been amazing this year. I greatly appreciate it. And so to some practical application. So when we think about burning up fat, of course, many people will think about cardio as one way of contributing towards this. And that's absolutely fine. And I just want to let you know that I have a video comparing lower intensity to higher intensity cardio protocols right here. And I've linked that down below. So if you want an in-depth video comparing protocols, where essentially both protocols have advantages and disadvantages, and it really comes down to you applying it to yourself as basically all concepts do. But at this point, what I wanted to do is draw on a post by Dr. Eddie Joe. And essentially this goes through the patients needed for fat loss. Because when we think about fat loss, we can look in the mirror and we can see visible changes. I lost fat. Oh, I lost fat this week, for example. But sometimes through a fat loss journey, these visible changes may become harder to see or more intricate. And people may look in the mirror and think, I've stopped losing fat, I must be doing something wrong. And, it, and in essence, you're not doing anything wrong. Just keep going with that fat loss process where the base layer underlying principles are needed, such as a caloric deficit. And there are many ways you can achieve this caloric deficit through a training and nutrition plan. But essentially this point of this post is to have patience and understand that even if you cannot see visible changes every week, for example, the fat loss process is still going on in your body. So don't be tempted to turn to hacks, for example, from fitness influencers or fitness influencers selling you magic pills, for example. And so if you look at the deepest level here, we're going microscopic, you have the gene level, the gene expression, the activation of key genes that play a regulatory role in human fat lipid metabolism and epigenetic modifications via lifestyle changes. And then we can go up a level to the molecular level, the lipid catabolism. Catabolism is the breaking down of molecules. Various stimuli such as energy deficit increases the rate of intra-adipocyte lipid catabolism and fatty acid oxidation resulting in reduced total lipid content in adipose cells. Basically by creating that caloric deficit, that energy deficit, you have the potential to burn up fat. Number three, the cellular level, adipocyte atrophy. You should know this word atrophy by now, where something essentially decreases in size. Decreased intracellular lipid content reduces the size and mass of adipose cells. Sufficient atrophy of sufficient number of cells will begin to manifest in visual change. And so this is kind of the part of this molecular levels of presentation where you'll start to see these visible changes. And then number four, organ tissue level, reduced adipose size and mass with adequate adipose Adipocyte atrophy comes observable changes in the size and mass of adipose tissue, eventually altering body composition and overall body mass. And so level four is essentially what people are working towards, these visible changes and decrease in body fat levels if fat loss is your goal. But if you're not seeing that every week, don't panic and understand there are the deeper layer, if you like, more intricate things happening in your body. So the message of this video is essentially trust the process, consistency, challenge your body, don't be tempted by fitness fat loss hacks and just keep working hard at your fat loss goal and you will get there if you are implementing those base layer principles. I'm James Linker. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.